Welcome everybody to the season three premiere, this very special episode of the I Went Outside Today podcast. This is one of your three hosts, Chris. I'm Sydney. Whoa. I went second. Interrupter. (laughs) And I'm Cheryl. I do the things. And uh, indeed, you do have a story to tell about the things that you've done. I got a story about stories. You went to a story party. I did. The description of the Story Party Tour. At Story Party, you will hear true dating stories that will make you feel better because, let's be honest, it could be worse. Story Party has played to sold-out audiences in over 65 countries because the dating struggle is real worldwide. We are in town for a short time only, so grab your tickets. Sydney, grab tickets. You've had enough coffee dates to master the art of fake laughing. Now come to our show and laugh for real. I've actually only ever had one coffee date, so they don't know me at all. So this is a, an event that Cheryl and I have actually been to before, but we'll let Sydney kick it off with her description of the event. Uh, where did you go to do the story party? The Walter Dale Theater, which is like by the fringe theater which means nothing to anyone not from here interesting you saw the theater when cheryl and i went to go see it we uh got to see it at a what was it the rocky mountain yeah ice house or rocky mountain yeah it was a bar on jasper ave mm-hmm. interesting so we went out had some dinner had some drinks and enjoyed a story party i had a kombucha a lavender kombucha nice Nice. I didn't have dinner. So it was at the Walterdale Theater. I'm trying to picture it in my mind, but I don't can't quite remember. It's by the Fringe Theater. If I've been there before. It's by the Fringe Theater. Is that the one with the ghosts in it, Cheryl? Do you remember? It was Firefighters Fringe Walterdale. I'm pretty sure the um I'm pretty sure the Walterdale is supposed to be haunted. That's terrible. That was another haunted location Sydney got to go to. Gross. It wasn't haunted when I was there. Mm-hmm. Did you bring your uh, kombucha tea? Did you sneak it in? No, I, pur- coat? I purchased it there because I was early. You were early? I was early. Did you even go? I did. <laughs> I walked there because it takes the same amount of time. to. It's so far. It takes the same amount of time, though, to walk there as it does to bus there because the bus is like this big stupid loop. So I just walked there. Well done. And then I was early. I bet you hatched some Pokemon on the way. No, I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't playing any Pokemon Go that day. I didn't feel like it. No Weedles. Although someone recently described my Pokemon Go playing habits as playing it as if it was my job until I reach level forty and then falling off the place, the face of the earth. Was that mom? No, it was my other friend. <laughs> no, wait, <laughs> that came out weird. <laughs> it came out so weird. <laughs> Mom's your only friend. I don't understand. No, he's my, like, because he's my other friend in Pokemon Go. So we share a bed together and he's everything. He's, like, one of my only friends in Pokemon Go. Um, yeah. Him. Yeah, he's my, he's my friend Mike. Hey, Mike. Don't, that's weird. <laughs> I don't want to name all my friends on the podcast because then people will find me. We only heard <laughs> that you have one other friend, so it's mom and it's Mike. <laughs> No, I have more friends than that, but he's my, like, very specifically my Pokemon Go friend. <laughs> to be fair, most of your friends have pretty common names. Because so. I'm friends with you guys in Pokemon Go, and I'm friends with Mom, and then I'm like friends with Mike. <laughs> and like everyone else is like a stranger. Oh, and I'm friends with Joe in Pokemon Go. And Kevin. I think I have sure. many friends. You have many friends who are related to you. <laughs> I also think Cheryl brings up a boy, a very good point that all of your friends have very um, common names. How are <laughs> they going to figure it as out? As if you're making it up. Because <laughs> what if they piece them all together? Then they find me. Yeah, no one's going to have friends named Mike and Lindsay. No one. So you're at the theater. I'm at the theater. Enjoying your kombucha I tea. Purchase. It's not, well, it's like tea, but it's like fizzy. It's not like tea tea. It's like a fizzy drink. Enjoying your fizzy kombucha tea. With lavender. With lavenders in it. Yeah. And the first thing that I really didn't like is that I wanted to sit at the top because it was like those big triangle type stairs where you walk all the way up like a movie theater. Mm-hmm. But halfway up, it was roped off. And I couldn't sit at the top, and I wanted to. Probably reserved. There was no one up there. 
COVID. There's no one else. Why for COVID would they squish us all together? That's the opposite of what you should do. That's for the next COVID. Alberta. <laughs> and did you go to this event with a friend or did you go all by I your went onesies? By myself. I don't have any friends. What about Mike? <laughs> Only a Pokemon guy. Or mom. Why didn't Pogo Mike go with <laughs> you? Or mom. <laughs> Mom would enjoy this event. I don't know. I don't think mom would enjoy this event. She doesn't date. But there'd be no death in it. You know the... Well, <laughs> settle down. You know the um, the hermit from Yogi Bear? That's mm -hmm. mom. The hermit? Yeah. Yeah. Hermit. This is something I'm not aware of. How do you You're not know Yogi Bear? I know Yogi Bear, and I know Boo Boo, and I know the ranger. And then there's hermit. He's got like... Snow shoes. Here, yeah. Mm. And he's a hermit. Mm -hmm. Wow. To I'm be embarrassed for you. To be fair, Sydney, Chris is an extrovert and you and I are introverts. We're more yeah. likely to identify with the hermit. I do identify with hermit. But mom literally is hermit. I okay. used to drop her off at a mountain cave. So I don't think she would have liked dating stories. Maybe she'll surprise you and bring a guy to our wedding. Gross. <laughs> yep. I did leave room for a plus one. By the way, you and mom have yet to uh, RSVP. Oh, do I have to do that? You should. Yeah. Yes. So I'm we coming. know you're coming. I'm coming. All right. Heard it here first. I did it. Like you wanted me to fill it out and put it in the mail? We wanted some sort of confir <laughs> confirmation <laughs> you're actually coming. Uh -oh. Why would I not come? I don't know. Unless I forget about you it. You hate then leaving your come. house. You've said that on numerous occasions. Is it at nine? Is it at nine o'clock at night? Have you read the wedding invite? No. <laughs> Did you even open the envelope? No, I don't read mail. <laughs> we hand delivered. So then how do you know you're going to be able to join us? I can do it. I just do it. So Not everything has to be so weighed down with like letters and calendars and written confirmations. Do you know what separates us from the animals? Thumbs. That we make plans and promises. <laughs> no, it's thumbs. And you are an animal. It's thumbs and textiles, actually. And also monkeys have twice as many thumbs as we do, so. But do they have textiles? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess since this is our September episode, we will see you next month if you attend our wedding. Out of hand. This podcast is already so far off track. <laughs> so dating and stories. And I couldn't sit at the top and I wanted to sit at the top. I take by the sudden drastic turn you took from this conversation that you just left the event and you did not attend the rest of it exactly because you couldn't sit at the top exactly that's 100 percent what happened where did you end up sitting just in an aisle seat not at the top by strangers i think you would be sitting by a strangers no matter what it is a theater if they opened up all of the seats we could have spread out so i wouldn't have to sit by a stranger mm. so that's pretty much a violation of the Charter of Human Rights. This is the Netflix generation talking to us. They just want to sit at home all alone, be comfy. We're in the same generation. <laughs> Are you going to go protest at the ledge? Yes. Your, your rights of sitting wherever you want in a the theater? Just sitting not near strangers. Okay. Yeah. Did you think about just crossing the line and sitting up there anyway? No. Why not? That's for heathens. <laughs> There are rules in this country. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a rule breaker. Was there a sign? No, there was just a rope. So you took an aisle seat. Yeah. Like a, like a common person. Mm -hmm. Didn't get to sit in the top row like the royalty you feel you are. I just like to be up high away from predators. That's where I always sit at the movies, and if there, that's why I like law. How did the event start? There was one comedian and then there was another comedian. Well, actually, it started with she was reading a bunch of like the best dating story, like little short blurb dating stories. And then. So it had two hosts. Yeah. OK. And uh, do they have any stage props or was it just like a bare open stage that they're standing up? I on? don't know why you think all comedy is carrot top, but like literally only carrot top has props. I'm just saying. Everyone else is like not. Sometimes for a stage special, they put a little bit of like background going on there. Like some mm -hmm. people just prefer to leave it like Spartan in black. Other people like have they put a table. weird sculptures in the background. Oh, they put a table with cards so that you could write down your terrible dating stories. Nice. Okay. Did you take a card? No. 
I don't really have any dating stories. So you didn't take any cards. Did your neighbors take any cards and write down stories on them? I don't know. I don't think so. Did you see anyone grab a card and write down stories? That was like in the second half of the show. Um, and then there's like intermission and everyone in my row got up and left. But I don't know if they wrote down stories. Hmm. I wasn't paying attention. I was texting during the intermission. Who are you texting? Probably you guys. i was yelling at you a lot. Where are some of your other friends? As we <laughs> previously discussed. <laughs> Did you have a favorite story? No. So the first half of the show is the two presenters. They present stories that have been submitted to them online or from previous shows, I take it. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like, they were all, she read all Canadian ones because it's like a world touring yep. thing. And if I recall from the time that we went, it's usually like uh, stories about like awkward people that they went to eat out with or... Mm -hmm. How things went very bizarre once the date came to an end and one of them gets invited up for coffee and then things turn strange. Yeah. Oh, one of the saddest ones was this lady met her date in a park and they chatted and then she went to the washroom and then she came back and he was gone. That was pretty savage. Ghosted. Mm -hmm. Although if you truly want to ghost someone when the person comes asking around for you, have someone planted there to say, oh, Sydney? She died 10 years ago on this very night. Ooh, that's a good idea. She was on a date. That's a good idea. We should do that. Mm -hmm. You should truly ghost people, mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. disappear. I like it. I'm a fan of it. That or just muster up the courage and tell the person you're not interested. I'm going home. No, if you send enough subtle signals, they'll get it and you won't have to say anything. Mm. I mean, what? Or you could just <laughs> tell them you're not interested. I do, actually, usually. Good. It's only fair. Random concern, just they have a podcast, the people who do this story tour, mm -hmm. and they read the stories online. So if we're reading the stories on our podcast, that might be a conflict of interest. But I think they also post them on Facebook. Don't you think? Like, they post them on their Facebook page. So you could go online right now and check them out on yeah. their... I think as long as we don't post, like, say, the ones from their podcast, which I've never even listened to. Yes, because the second half of the event is where they invite people to come up to the stage and tell their own stories. Yeah, they had three people. But the first half was really good. There was these two comedians. And the first one, one of her bits right now is like viral on TikTok. So I'd actually seen her before I went to the thing. But like I didn't recognize her name. But when she started doing like her comedy, I recognized her joke because it's like circulating on TikTok. It's about like microblading in prison tattoos mm. it's very funny tell the joke that's basically it but i already ruined it <laughs> wow she's talking about how you like go get micro micro blading is like where you take little blades and you jam the ink into your eyebrow and it's like a prison tattoo for housewives mm. i'm really not doing it justice mm -hmm. tattooed makeup yeah she's very funny what's her her name is gilly something gilly suit no gillian anderson so when Cheryl and I had gone, it was just a singular host, just one guy up mm -hmm. there. Oh, I had two hosts. And uh, both women or a guy and girl? Both women. Gilly Apter. Spell it, please. G-I-L-L-I-A-P-T-E-R. And then the other lady was Parasache. So Gilly was like the main host. And then... She read the stories, and then she did her comedy, and then Paris shaded her comedy, and then it was an intermission, and then the more stories. Gilly, Sydney thinks your comedy's top-notch. Top-notch. And I also like Paris oh. a lot. She's um, a lesbian, and she had a joke about how she doesn't date young girls because they all have air fryers, and I was like, wow. I feel attacked. <laughs> you have an air fryer. <laughs> I have the most air fryer -y air fryer. So we're not compatible, Paris Sachet. Mm. I like air fryers. That's okay. We already know that you're pre-betrothed to not Jerry from our psychic Valentine episode. Or maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to start reading some dating stories? Yep. <laughs> okay. So this is from somebody whose Reddit handle is Comics Nerd. 
met a girl at a club, invited her out for dinner for the next week, and then went to the club to see what would happen. At the date, she was late, and I started talking with the waiter, who also went to the same club. About 30 minutes, she arrived about 30 minutes late, full of apologies. The date was okay, but she was nervous and blamed it on it being a first date. Until the police arrived. Apparently, she was shoplifting at the shop next door, and the camera caught images that showed where she went. Fortunately, the waiter could help me from not getting arrested. Uh, I was going to give the late girl the benefit of the doubt, but she was stealing. Yep. Tisk tisk. So this is much like how it was presented at the show that you went to? Yeah, it's just like really short little blurb, like the meta guy in a park, like just like literally two or three lines. They're supposed to be really, really short. Okay, mm-hmm. so they're just kind of reading them off their phone or a sheet of paper. Yeah, like just a couple lines. Mm-hmm. And then when they had the people come down and tell the stories, it was supposed to be three minutes or less. Okay, yeah, some people get long-winded. Mm-hmm. So why didn't you come to, up with any of your own stories? I don't have any dating stories. Mm, you've had a boyfriend, though. Yeah, Did you forget but... to go on dates? Yeah, we didn't really go on dates. I took. I really wanted to go have a date night and go to a simple favor, and he hated the movie. And I was like, well, you're the worst. A simple favor? Yeah. You probably want to see a complicated flavor. He was like, <laughs> he was like, oh, it's a chick flick. And I was like, fuck you, it's Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick. So good. A simple favor is the best. Did you try and compromise on a different movie? No, I wanted to see a simple favor. <laughs> Actually, we saw Moana together. Too. That nice. sounds like a date. And he smuggled chicken into the theater. That sounds like a date. Which is like a wild movie snack. Like that's very ambitious. Next level. Uh, I don't know. I brought chicken? in plenty of hot food into the theater. I don't know. I feel like that's next level. To I just mean, like a full chicken. chicken. Well, like chicken fingers. Yeah. That's Maybe fine. a chicken worth of chicken fingers. That's a lot of chicken fingers. There's a lot of chicken fingers. You just say you got in concessions. What are they going to do? Call you a liar? And they had beer Customers at that theater, always but right. I do not drink at the theater because I went to one movie drunk and it was Gravity. Now I don't drink anymore at the theater. Mm. <laughs> because it made you ill? Yeah. Have you ever been real wasted and watched Gravity on the big screen? Uh, it's not a good idea. No. It's a terrible idea. Okay. Yeah. The last movie I saw drunk in theater was Crank 2, and I have to say it was a wonderful time. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, we've had different experiences. You should have saw Crank 2. I don't know what that is. I never saw Crank 1. You should see Crank 1 and then Crank 2. I make no promises. I like to watch the same movies that I already know that I like. I don't really like stranger movies. <laughs> what? You're so closed off from new experience. You're closed off from new This experience. is like year three of I Went Outside Today, and you're still like, ah, they're movies I've never seen before. I like what I like. There's just so many more of them all the time. I do have all the time. What, are you just watching movies like you're going to die tomorrow like a freak? And you got to see all the ones you can. I don't think that's true. I think that you should watch good movies that you like. You're putting words in my mouth. Speaking of words in mouth. Being a turd person. How come you didn't put any words into the uh, people's mouths? Give them a story. Because I don't have any date stories. Oh. What are we going to do? I went to Moana and we smuggled chicken fingers in? That's a very romantic story we I, went to a simple favor and my boyfriend complained that it was a chick flick like what who cares you should no lead with the feelings. first one the moana and the chicken fingers that sounds like a nice one yeah but this is bad dating stories mm. i went on a coffee like not like a date but like a coffee meetup with someone who turned out to be awful and the biggest red flag was that he told me that you can make arsenic or something from apple seeds and said that he wished he had a bunch of apple seeds for his ex and if i could go back in time that probably should have been the moment that i stood up and walked away Mm -hmm. because he was talking about murder yes but i have a very bad judge of character how did you proceed from that little fact did you tell him the real way you have to poison people i don't know how i feel like you would I feel like you'd have very strong opinions on how to get rid of someone if you really wanted to. I don't really. I mean, poison, I feel like they're going to trace it and they're going to find the poison. And it's like women always poison. Why do you think that I have such strong opinions about murder? You've already come up with like a few facts and like poisoning's not the way to go. I mean, I know things, but that doesn't mean I have strong opinions about how to murder someone. I feel like these I'm are informed on the issues. Probably the very things you said to that man on your date. <laughs> I didn't say anything. He said the murder. No, but everything that followed just now. I didn't say anything about the murder. I don't tell people that I poisoned my exes on dates because I'm not a freak. 
or that I want to poison my exes, excuse me. And also, now that I'm thinking about it, very womanly way to care, to try and kill your ex-partner. Yes, it is. That's yeah. sexist. It is, well, it's just true. Mm. Women poison. Mm-hmm. How would you poison someone, Sydney? I don't know. Ricin, probably. Mm. But I don't know. But you're a woman. But ricin's not traceable. The body processes it quickly. But like everybody knows that because of Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. I'm not the only one who knows it. So it's a good one, too, because I don't only know it. You shouldn't poison someone Mm -hmm. with something that only you know. (laughs) This has gone awry. Okay, Cheryl's got another one here. Took her to the driving range to teach her how to drive a golf ball. While showing her how to swing, I hit her in the head on a backswing and cut her head open, bleeding all over the place. Took her to the ER to get stitches, and then we went out to the bar afterwards. She is now my wife of 15 plus years. It was a bad date, but memorable. I wouldn't marry that guy. It was an accident. That So you want to, just because it's an accident, like he's clumsy. You shouldn't marry clumsy people. Well, I get clumsy. Have you smacked someone in the head with a golf club? Like there's clumsy and then there's like murder clumsy. Okay, but... I don't go golfing, so I can't hit someone in the head with a golf well, what ball. What if you wanted to start? <laughs> well, Chris would not be teaching me because neither of us golf. Well, how about that? Yeah. Okay, I have a story here. This is from the DYL show. I don't know Reddit. what that is. This is a uh, Redditor user, the DYL show. So I was on a date at a restaurant with this girl I met through a dating app. Things were definitely going well. She seemed to be pretty into me, and we were hitting it off. About half hour into the date, I started getting absolutely strangled by a chicken strip, and I didn't know what to do. I was trying to gather myself for a few seconds before I rushed to the bathroom, and I could tell she was shook. I came back within one minute, and she was getting ready to leave. I'm pretty embarrassed by this, and I've literally never choked in my life, so I'm really confused. She blocked me on everything immediately after. Do you think this is something that would completely turn someone off, or was she just looking for an opportunity? Generally confused because of the fact that everything was growing great until then. So a guy choked on his dinner. That's pretty ice cold to like just be packing up your stuff. Like Maybe you should administer the Heimlich maneuver mm-hmm. if they're not coughing. If they're coughing, that means that air is getting into their lungs. So you should just watch. Mm -hmm. And wait. Mm -hmm. But don't just pack up and leave. You also did just say not to marry somebody who's clumsy. So how is choking any different? That's clumsy to yourself. Don't marry someone that's clumsy to others. (laughs) That's how it's different, Cheryl. I see. This is a good preview for our next Valentine's episode. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm just saying. What would you do if the person you were with was choking. I would be like, there, there. And what would you do if you were the one choking? I would just stop choking. <laughs> just stop breathing entirely? <laughs> no, just stop choking. What if they patted you on the back and said, there, there? I'd say, don't do that. I'm <laughs> fine. I can handle this choking without you. Mm. Get out of here. You pack up and go. So not another story, but a personal story. Oh, yeah. Do you have any terrible stories about dating? So in high school, a girl asked me out. Technically, her friends asked me out for her. Gross. So she invited me to go see a a movie, Minority Report, Tom Cruise in Mm -hmm. theaters. How was that? It's a pretty good movie. So we went to go see Minority Report. Uh, This was all set up with her friends. Does Tom Cruise run in that movie? He runs in all the movies. That's all he's good for. Did the ladies buy the ticket? The friends? Uh... Or did you have to pay? I do not recall. I might have paid for both of our tickets. I'm old fashioned that way. Sexism. Classic. And so we (laughs) saw the movie and we talked about the movie afterwards and she did not say a single word to me. Stared at the floor, couldn't make eye contact. The uh, So you didn't talk about the movie. You talked about the movie. I tried to talk with her about the movie, and she just couldn't say anything to me, to my face. Do you think she only liked you because you were tall? Most people do. (laughs) Mm. What's that like? Uh, It's probably not like being short like you. I'm not short. I'm average. (laughs) That's very rude. 
I think she liked me because she saw me wearing an X-Files t-shirt and she was a humongous X-Files fan. Mm-hmm. But then you opened your mouth and started talking. She was just so <laughs> incredibly shy. She wouldn't answer any questions beyond like one word answers. How did she think this was going to go though? She shouldn't have let her friends talk her into this. Unless she should have brought her friends on the date. That would be a weird date. For moral support. No, you should be allowed to. All right. I've been on, like, on the other side of that. Where you brought all your friends to a date? A friend would bring me on his dates with this one because girl. A security blanket. <laughs> I didn't understand why for years we had a falling out like eventually because like I hated his girlfriend and I hated going out on their dates with them. Oh, that's a different. You should only be allowed to bring your friends to first dates. And he would uh, pester me all the time if I said no. Like, no, I got something else. It's like, come on, come on, man. I need you there. Come on. And it wasn't like a double date. I wasn't dating anyone at the time. He just wanted me there on their date. Mm-hmm. Why? Was he secretly in love with you? I don't think so. Are you sure? Because sometimes I called out one time. Not with you, but with somebody. We've been really drunk together and there is no confessions of love. So. But maybe he's like, because I get like really drunk, but I'm like all there still. So. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Texting us pictures of baby monkeys that's me all there okay. that's me i've done that to you sober as well so i'm pretty sure you're not in love with me all definitely right. not now after a falling out okay but yeah it's probably in love with you it's just weird being brought in on someone else's date yeah no like if it like that because like yeah third wheel to be a friend but like at a first date when they could be a murderer you should be allowed to bring your friends. Everyone can be a murderer. That's Have the you whole ever problem. secretly brought your friends to a date? I think this is like the old timey ways where you couldn't like be with a woman unattended. I, I did. I did secretly bring my friends to a date. I have offered to be that person on a date. <laughs> did anyone take you up on it? No. I made my friends sit across the restaurant from me one time, and not acknowledge me, but just like Supervised. be present. Mm-hmm. I didn't get murdered, so it worked. I don't think it would have worked out either way with this girl. If she had her friends there with her, I probably would have ended up talking to her friends more because she Mm. was just too shy. Mm -hmm. It's just weird that she even went on the date. Why didn't she just stay in her room and be shy by herself? Friends probably talked her into it. Her friends sound like they have bad ideas because she crashed and burned pretty hard. Maybe she thought he was cute. She wanted to go on the date and see how things would go and she just wasn't comfortable. He looked like a turd in high school. (laughs) Everyone thinks I'm cute. Oh no, I was there. Actually, we did have very cool jackets. Nice. That's not really a terrible dating story. That's just an awkward dating story. That's kind of my worst date. They kind of like set her up the best they could, though. That's like what you do. You go to a movie and then you have something to talk about, which is a movie. I hope she's well. I hope she's well. Well, from what her friends told me later on, because I asked her about her once. I was like, whatever happened to her? And they said she became extremely religious and they don't talk to her anymore. Oh. That was just a couple years out of high school. Ooh. And now we're like 10 years away from that now, so. What kind of religion, though? Mormons? You know, I never asked. Probably. Why not? I don't know. We went to a Christian school. I just assumed she became like an uber Christian. We went or to a Catholic, Catholic school. school. Same thing. They're not. They have the same cast. I mean, kind of. Uh, my worst date was actually the weekend after I first saw Chris across the room. Oh, and he left you for a watermelon. That's right. Mm, so watermelon. good job to that story where I saw Chris. So I had met this guy at speed dating at one point and he came up to me at the event that Chris and I were both at and he cornered me. He would not take no for an answer when I was like, no, like Ooh. I'm just not ready for a date. And I was like, look, like. I'm laid off right now. I have no money. Like, I'm not going to go into a date where I don't have money to be able to pay for myself because that just makes things awkward. And he was like, whoa, that's very forward of you. Like, that's such a refreshing attitude. And it just seemed like every time I tried to tell him to go away, he wouldn't take a hint. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. Fine. I will go on this date, like, just to get him to leave me alone. And... He had eaten dinner before I got there, so he tried to push me to, like, order food, and I was like, uh... To just eat in front of him without him eating? Yes. And so I was like, if I'm going to order something, I'm going to order, like, a dessert. I'm not going to order an actual meal. And it was super awkward because 
he spent most of the time talking about like how amazing he was and how good he was as a person and all his experience in dating and like he'd even done that at the event like there was one portion of the event that Chris and I went to where they were talking about like sex and information on sex and he was sitting next to me at the time and kept being like oh like look at my knowledge on sex and I was like this guy is creepy do you think he was a vore probably Um, I don't know what the term vore is that's where you get sexually aroused by the thought of a monster eating you oh maybe I think that's what it was yeah but at the end of the or I think you could also be the monster which is sad because you can never be a monster (laughs) Yeah. Uh, you go spirit of Halloween. Right. <laughs> so, uh, no, maybe they're not a real monster. Then you just dress up as a monster. <laughs> Continue. Yeah. My apologies. No, no worries. Uh, feel free. Yeah. So the date ended, and I like booked it out of there. I like ran to my car like as fast as I possibly could, and like I on my way home, I was like, I need to have to. T- 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 On my way home, I told myself, I was like, I need to text that guy and tell him that this is not going to work because that was like the worst date I have ever been on. Mm -hmm. So I sent him a text when I got home and I was like, look, like it was great chatting with you, but like I still don't think I'm ready to date. Best of luck, whatever else. And then I had a nice warm bath and a glass of wine. And I was like, what about that cute guy that I saw at the event that ran out the door to get a watermelon? I should send him a text. Did you know that he went to get a watermelon? (laughs) No, not at the time. Yeah. That's probably why she gave you a chance. Mm -hmm. She didn't know about your weird fruit obsession. (laughs) There's other fruits, too. Like, watermelon's not even available all season. It technically is. It's just not very good in the winter. Mm -hmm. I guess so. I do like mangoes. We value fruit in this household now. Yes. There's actually mango in our fridge. Why do you say that like I don't value fruit? Because <laughs> I know you do not. I get those big boxes at the farmer's market. Okay? I get a lot of fruit. How dare you? <laughs> so defensive. We all get fruit, Chris. I have kiwis. I meal prepped kiwis Good this job. week. Mm-hmm. You can meal prep kiwis for five days because the acidity keeps them from being gross. Kiwi is a poor man's dragon fruit. Wow. Wow. How dare you? I also went on a date when I was unemployed, Cheryl. Yeah. Yeah. Then I had my roommate and her husband get a table on the other side of the restaurant and just keep an eye on me. And how did that go? It was weird. I got I was nervous and I got so drunk I fell over in a snowbank and I was late. Nice. A big snowbank, like a dangerous snowbank. Like, did you do a pre-drinking before going? Maybe. Oh. Just like, it wasn't pre-drinking. It was like, take the edge off drinking. <laughs> Drunk enough to trip over a snowbank. But it was into a snowbank. Mm. Does that so. ever really help? No. Yeah. No. And then I was PSA covered in for snow all of you out there. Because of, I fell into a snowbank. Mm. <laughs> and dirt. Do you think you're his worst date story ever? No, because he was high. So this girl it was... showed up covered in dirt <clears throat> and snow. He was high, so it was pretty evenly matched. Yeah. I don't think I'm his worst date story, but I'm probably not top for 10. And then I basically also said thanks for, I got like a appetizer type thing. I also did not get a meal because he was paying. Because mm-hmm. he asked me out like five times. And I like talking to him on Tinder. I just like, can't date right now because I'm unemployed. Yep. I have no money. And then... um. So he offered to pay, so then I just got, like, an appetizer and a beer or whatever. And that's also why I pre-gamed, so that I wouldn't order extra beers. Yep. Smart and economical. I think he likes seafood or something that I didn't like either, though, so. (laughs) I feel like he got, like, a dynamite roll or something. And he had the same hat as my ex, which I didn't like. If only they didn't make more than one of those kinds of hats. Yeah. (laughs) Shame. Mm -hmm. I had another guy on the first date uh, propose marriage. I can't remember the exact oh. scenario that led up to it, but I I was looking for a guy who was nerdy, because I like nerdy things, and so I assumed that he was going to not be that nerdy, and then when I kept listening to him and adding into conversations and being able to hold my own in those nerdy conversations, at one point he just looked at me and he's like, marry me, and I was like, I need to leave. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Rude. Fun fact, he tracked me down like two years later on Facebook to send me a message and be like, could I have a second chance? And I was already dating somebody else. And I was like, nope. Amazing. <laughs> 
Oh my god, that reminds I did have another date story. I Do forgot you? about this guy, but um I took him to like a cheap breakfast place at like near where I used to live and they had like five dollar breakfast and like bottomless mimosas or like something like that or cheap mm-hmm. mimosas and a pool table, so I thought that'll be good. And then yeah, it was actually after that other date because I was already working in IT and I was explaining my job to him and I just saw his eyes like glaze Please. over oh, no. like the boredest that he's ever been. I was like, it's not going to work out. Yeah. But that was not like, that was like a meet and I don't call them dates because it's like a meet and greet. I call it a coffee date. Yeah. Like, yeah. But like I go on breakfast dates with my friends. Yes. So it's not like a breakfast date. Yes. Because that's for friendships. Correct. Yeah, I'm going to brunch soon. I'm really excited. Are you going to kiss your friends? Maybe. Don't worry about who I'm kissing. I'm actually kissing no one post-COVID. I, and in general, I think kissing's fucking gross. <laughs> Especially when you're sober, because then there's no alcohol to kill the germs. There's germs in your mouth. Like, if you bite another yes, human, it's yes. like a problem. You go to the ER. Mm-hmm. Humans have dirty mouths. Like cats. <laughs> Fun fact, my brother kept pushing me to bite his finger once, and I did, and I reopened a cut in his finger. And <laughs> did you go to the hospital? Yeah, we sure did, and he had to soak his finger in green disinfectant solution for a couple hours. It's fun times. I believe it. Yeah. So, yeah. No kissing in the post-COVID world for me. I don't even know. What's the evolutionary purpose of kissing? I don't think there is an evolutionary purpose evolutionary purpose there's an evolutionary purpose for everything i think i was listening to the lex friedman podcast the other day he had a guest who was talking about um sex and mating Mm -hmm. and i believe the um reason for kissing is it means you're willing to be vulnerable with a person Uh, okay because of germs because of germs because yeah because people are filthy especially like way back when Interesting. When we all started I'm not kissing. willing to be vulnerable with a person. I was going to say... I don't want to get sick. That's technically a behavioral change, not evolutionary, but that does make sense for sure. Mm-hmm. Be- a behavioral? Yeah, behavioral change versus evolutionary change. Different things. Well, I'm not. <laughs> You're not two different things? No, I'm not willing to be vulnerable oh. with people, especially with germs. Germs is dangerous in post-COVID world. I think they're about the same as before. Yeah. No. Don't get monkeypox. No. So, Sydney, would you recommend the dating story party to other people? I would if they would let you sit where you want to sit. (laughs) Want to sit at the top. Want to sit up high, away from predators. And I would highly recommend Gilly Apter and Paris Sache. They were very funny ladies. Mm -hmm. Check out their TikTok. Which Gilly after had a viral TikTok joke, and she also has a special on Netflix and Paris Ache. I think you can find her on Instagram and YouTube, and I believe HBO. There on you go. the hobo. On the on the good old hobo. Well, I think that brings us <laughs> to the end of today's very special episode of the I Went Outside Today podcast. <laughs> this is one of your three hosts, Chris, Bye. signing off. This is Cheryl. Bye. I'm Sydney. I did the thing. Thanks for listening to today's very special episode of the I Went Outside Today podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, spread the joy and share us with your friends or leave a review. If you really enjoy our podcast and you want to support us in doing more episodes, consider donating to our Patreon or leave us suggestions in the comment section on our website or social media. Or you can email us at IWentOutsidePod at gmail.com. And make sure you follow us on our social medias. We got Twitter. We got Facebook. We don't got Snapchat because that's for creeps. We don't have Twitter. We don't have (laughs) Facebook and Instagram. We got Facebook, Insta. Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm not going to do it again. It's not going to be as good. Why don't we have Twitter? (laughs) We got Facebook. We got Instagram. And you can see all our photos and adventures that don't get turned into episodes because every day of our life is an adventure.
Bye.